Welcome to this preview of the ADS All Sky Survey, a new project funded by NASA aimed at showing why astronomers have studied the sky over time. If you click on either one of these two links on the landing page, you get a view of the sky showing the distribution of articles. Let's start with the latter. I'll click here and soon you'll see a view of 180 degrees of sky with this color heat map showing the parts of the sky that have been the most studied. The map is built by counting how many times a source has been mentioned in articles in the astronomical literature. These sources down here seem particularly bright. Astronomers will recognize those sources mm -hmm. as two southern galaxies, the large and small Magellanic clouds. If I toggle here to a base layer of an image, you can see them right there on the sky. And if I zoom in on the galaxy here, I can, for example, turn on this select tool, which will show me sources, particular sources of interest in that galaxy. And I can even say this particular region looks interesting, highlight it, and then the survey will return um, all of the sources that correspond to those small red boxes and all of the articles, or at least the 200 most recent articles, that mention those sources. And if I go here to objects, you'll see that Supernova 1987A, which went off in the Large Magellanic Cloud in 1987, is the top object on the list, along with many other objects in the 30 Duratus Nebula, which is where I was in the LMC in that view. You could open all of the papers um, in the ADS interface itself, which gives you a link to the literature directly. And then you can filter the papers using these facets here on the side in one of the ADS Labs interfaces. But let's focus on the ADS All Sky Survey. So let's go back here. And again, just for reference, you could also open the object list in a separate window and start exploring the properties of individual objects like Supernova 1987A. Let's go back to the survey, though. Let's close this list. And let me just show you that the original view that we had was all of the articles on the sky. Let's zoom way out again, okay? And instead, um, I could have chosen to filter by particularly uh, interesting astronomical objects. So if I wanted a view of articles that mention stars, it would look like that. Galaxies uh, would look like this. Page two regions is gonna look vaguely like stars. The reason it looks so underpopulated, here's the galactic plane, because a lot of times people who categorize the articles don't really know what things are. Um, and it's particularly bad with nebulae, which you'll see look very spotty. And you'll see that a very, very popular category is other, which pretty much means uncategorized, even though some of these things are stars, galaxies, H2 regions, or nebulae. So be careful. When you use this, it's not that these categories are wrong, it's that the other category contains a lot of information. These uh, tabs down here show you uh, objects that are particularly important in uh, radio astronomy, infrared astronomy, ultraviolet astronomy, uh, and X-ray astronomy. And uh, just for fun, we've made a custom layer, since this project is based at Harvard, uh, that shows what's of interest in particular to people at Harvard. This layer is uh, even more interesting in the Worldwide Telescope interface, which I'll show you in a moment. And again, if you'd like to switch back to the sky at any wavelength, just pick one of these tabs here. For example, here's an H-alpha image of the sky, and we can go switch back and forth between the H-alpha image and the Harvard layer. But let's switch over here to the Worldwide Telescope version, which will open to the same position that we were in in Aladdin. Now here, the default background is a WISE infrared survey, and this slider will take me back and forth between the WISE infrared survey and this Harvard map that we were looking at a moment ago. Here what's happened is that the Harvard map is calibrated so that what's red is particularly interesting to Harvard, and what's blue is interesting to everyone, and what's white is interesting to people at Harvard and uh, everywhere else. And so the particularly red spots are uh, regions that are interesting at Harvard. Now here's an interesting region that seems to be interesting to everyone. Again, those of you familiar with the sky will probably already recognize this. 
Um, but why don't I just go ahead and I'll turn on an optical background layer and then slide over there and you'll see right away that this is the Orion Nebula. Okay, the functionality of all of these other buttons is quite similar to the ADS, um, I'm sorry, to the Aladdin interface that you saw a moment ago. Um, one thing that's nice is you can minimize this menu here and just look at the data um, on the sky. Obviously what's different about the Aladdin version and the Worldwide Telescope version is that in the Worldwide Telescope version you can slide this transparency slider back and forth. Uh, what's also different is that if you click show sources at the moment it just shows you individual sources and you cannot select a region the way that you could uh, in the Aladdin interface. However, you can click on any one of these individual sources, see its Sinbad entry, um, and open all the papers about it in a way very similar to what I showed you uh, in Aladdin. And so this is pretty wonderful for exploring really why the sky has been studied. And you can you can pick your favorite object. I happen to like the, the Fucus region, so I can just type it in there. And then we'll go immediately to Ophiuchus, and you'll see that it's well studied. And that if we look at it in the optical, again, it's a rather beautiful nebula. And it'll show up as glowing infrared dust as well. And if we slide back and forth, you can see that a lot of the emphasis seems to be on the stars in Ophiuchus. Um, and if I click here on stars, you'll notice that the map of articles in stars looks very similar to the map of all. And for example, if I click the tab that says galaxies, since Ophiuchus has no galaxies that are particularly important, you'll see there's just a few little dots and they have nothing to do with the nebula. Anyway, just to leave you, let me show you that um, if you go back to the Aladdin version for a moment, there is a tour. And if you click here, you can go step by step and get a tour of the interface so that you won't have to watch this movie again and you'll figure out exactly how to use the ADS All Sky Survey. Uh, we'd be very happy to hear your comments. Uh, we will provide email links on the page to let you comment. Uh, and we are releasing this officially to the public at the AAS meeting in 2014 in Washington, D.C. So we hope you enjoyed this preview.